Welcome back to Wade Acres. Today we're going to be talking about the gourds that I use for making birdhouses around the property. And I grow all my own gourds, the different styles we'll talk about later. But I grow them, I dry them, cure them, and then cut them open, carve them up, and decorate them to be birdhouses around the property. So we're going to start you off here with the very end of the drying process. This is the beginning of June and the gourds are just about ready to be washed and turned into a birdhouse. So let's take a look. I have these gourds up behind my barn right now drying out and you can see they are in various stages of drying and molding. The mold is just the process of the drying or just a side effect of the drying process. You can see this one's pretty evenly co covered. That mold and the different spores, they're not very harmful to you. You don't want to be breathing them in, but they'll be fine to handle and you might want to wear gloves to clean them. But that mold and all the spores are going to be leaving different textures and designs all over your gourd. So you can use that with a clear coat and just use that as the design if you would like, or you could actually go ahead and decorate them yourself with a wood etching tool burn it in there or go ahead and paint them or stain them any way you want but here are a couple of the various gourds that I selected from my harvest last year to turn into birdhouses this is a common birdhouse gourd you can see the skin dried off and is peeling from the gourd it's perfectly fine but yeah that is a birdhouse gourd or a Chinese water bottle gourd. Now I should mention these are all hard shell gourds. So they're not soft like a pumpkin. They are hard shell gourds. That way they can dry out and cure and they'll last forever like, well not forever. They can dry out and cure and they'll last as long as a wooden birdhouse would pretty much if you uh, seal them correctly. The other one here is a martin birdhouse gourd. The martin is a, it's uh, named after a purple martin because you can use a bunch of these together and the uh, martins like to be communal birds. So you can put a bunch of these together and the purple martins will fly right in and make a home. They're a perfect size for that, uh, that type of bird. So that's why it's named purple martin or martin birdhouse gourd. And the last one here is a dipper gourd and this one is not usually used for birdhouses but I figured the cavity is going to be big enough on these ones that I saved. I just saved looks like three or four of those that had enough space inside of them that I could make a birdhouse gourd out of. Alright so the next step with these is going to be to go ahead and wash them. I'm going to soak them in water for about three to five minutes so that'll soften up all this mold growth and then I'll take a scrubbing pad of a sponge and rub them down until it's nice and smooth and clean like this one is. Now I got my gourd all scrubbed clean with the hard side of a kitchen sponge. Just scrub it off. You're not going to get all the spores off like I said. Those are part of the decoration now. The next step is to pick the size of paddle bit or hole saw that you need for your entrance hole. This is all going to depend on what kind of bird you want to attract to your nest or your birdhouse. So I try and go for the songbirds like wrens and bluebirds and finches. So that's what we mainly have around here and that will be an inch and a quarter paddle bit. That's what I got here is an inch and a quarter. The next thing I'm going to do is try and find the proper face for the gourd. So I'm going to look at it, try and see which way it's going to hang, just like you would carving a jack-o-lantern. You want to see which way is going to be a nice face. Since I'm going to be hanging it, not setting it down, I want to hold it up by the stem and see which way it's going to hang. And I think this is going to be the face right here. So what I'm going to do is about halfway up, because you need enough room in the bottom for them to make their nest and have the eggs up, and you need some headroom. So I'm going to go a little past halfway up on the gourd, 
you can see there hopefully and I'm just going to drill in need a battery that was a fresh battery drill in perfect doesn't have to be a perfect circle because when a bird makes a nest they don't make a perfect circle so it has to be big enough for them to get in and predator birds can't that's why I go with an inch and a quarter seems to be working around here I did actually have a birdhouse that a predator bird came in just pecked the whole circle out of here and got got inside but I'm going to take my finger now and just work inside, scrape it all loose just like you would a jack-o'-lantern. Bunch of little paper in there so you might want to get something so you don't make a mess like I need to. And I got a box here I can dump all the innards into. You have a bunch of pulp that's inside there as well as all your birdhouse gourd seeds. See right here, starting to get some seeds. I need these seeds so I can start some birdhouse gourds for this season. I'm pretty late on it, but this is when I got time to get to it, so still trying to get it done. The first time I grew these birdhouse gourd seeds, I didn't actually plant one until late July here in zone 6. So that's pretty late since they want about 180 days to fruition. But I still got seven of them. I made them into birdhouses. And I got the seeds, so I grew them again last year. And I got a bunch more. Now I have plenty to make my birdhouses out of. They didn't have to buy any more seeds either. So you're going to want to work on that. You might want to take a spoon or something to go in there and open it up. But really, if you just get it partially open, like I have here, get some of the pulp out, the bird's going to go in there and it's going to make its own home anyway. So you can leave some seeds and pulp in there for bedding and food. I don't know if they eat these seeds or not, but some might. Yeah, just get it opened up a little bit so they can fit in there and start working on it themselves to make it their own home. This is the paper-like pulp that comes out of there. It has all the seeds wrapped up inside. It's all dried out now because we left it dry and cure over winter. So I don't know if you can see in there or not, but... That's the entrance hole for the birdhouse. Now, next step, what we need to do, I'm gonna go and grab a eighth inch bit, drill bit, and I'm gonna put three holes in the bottom of this where I can see the water might sit. And you wanna have drainage holes in it because rain water will blow into the cavity there. And then I'm gonna take another bit, same eighth inch bit, and drill straight through Frankenstein, Frankenstein style straight through there so I can put a loop in there and hang it from that spot. That's what I'm going to do next. I got my eighth inch drill bit. You don't have to be real precise. I just like to look and see if there's going to be a low spot probably here and start right there. And then I just like to put a couple, a couple more around. That should keep any water from pulling up too much in the bottom. Now you want to look, make sure you got the face of it exactly perpendicular. And drill all the way through.
there we have it now what I do is take a coat hanger open it up send it through there and make a loop to hang it from because that's a nice stiff hanger so it doesn't blow too much in the wind and it holds it a little bit more steady for the birds now at this point after you put the hanger in you can go ahead and put this out for uh, the birds to go ahead and move right in or if you want to make it a little nicer you can take an outdoor polyurethane or any urethane you would use on wood and go ahead and clear coat this whole thing and you'll be able to keep all this nice mold texture and decoration natural decor that it already has or you can like I did last year I took a gourd and I etched it with a wood burner all the way around made a nice little house design on it with a picket fence and some flowers and if I have a video or a picture of that I'll go ahead and put that up but that's all you have to do go ahead and seal it so it can stay and if you do seal it you're going to want to put at least two coats on here and you're going to want to wait probably a month to a couple weeks at least before the stench and the smell of the clear coat urethane will be gone for a bird to move in so really you can just go ahead and clear coat it hang it up and as soon as that stench is gone and worn away with the weather sun and wind then the birds will find it and move in so i hope you enjoyed watching me build a birdhouse and that is all you need to do you can go ahead and grow all your own birdhouses for all the birds around your property like i have now you know how to grow and create your own birdhouse from scratch or from a seed in this case that's all for this one if you want to follow along go ahead and subscribe down below and hit that notification bell so you get notified whenever i post a new video i do post weekly updates of everything we're doing around here on the property and everything it's taken to get this homestead up and running that's all for this one you can find me and echo on the next one thanks for watching